definitely has something weird going on right here. Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're going to talk about Sheen versus Stella York. Wedding gown style. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. All right, so back to the topic at hand. I have more times than I can count been asked, what is the most expensive gown that I've ever worked on? Well, the answer to that is somewhere around 30 grand. What people do not ask very often though is what is the cheapest? And by cheapest, they don't mean free, like a gift from a family member or something from the Goodwill. What they're meaning is a gown like from Sheen, eBay, Amazon. Okay, let me clear something up first. Sheen says that the pronunciation of their company name is Shein. Shein, like she is in style. The problem with that is everyone I've ever heard pronounce this company name says Sheen. So just for familiarity's sake, I'm probably going to say Sheen most of the time. Okay, so back to the subject. Most people are meaning, uh, have I ever worked on a gown that's worth, say, less than 40 bucks? And the answer is yes. I get those pretty often, actually. Some of them have been absolute disasters, and some of them have been kind of okay. Some of them have been worth what they paid for. Now, the conversation that I will not be having today in this video, but you are more than welcome to have in the conversation in the comments, is the whole argument about fast fashion. Is it bad? Is it wrong? Is it whatever? Um, the reason why I'm not going to talk about that today is because I am a seamstress. I just sew what people bring to me. Both of these gowns are privately owned and I am just showing you the difference between the two for educational purposes. So here we go. Well, it definitely has something weird going on right here. Um, would it be a big deal to correct that? I don't think so. This lace is curving out. Uh, it probably needs you know, some tacking like right here. It has a um, kind of like a deeper, deeper hem here. That roll is a little bit wider than what we normally see. Moving on to the back, um, there's no hook and loop closure at the top of the zipper, which is a little odd, but uh, most of the time I have to replace them um, on the gowns that come even from um, expensive manufacturers. This could probably use some finagling. It does have a little bit of a sweep train on it, which is cute. That's a very popular train length for a lightweight dress that's this style. You can tell there's some issues as far as the opacity of the dress. This is a little bit opposite from what we normally see. If anything, usually the bodice is a little bit more sheer than the skirt. So let's look at the construction of this in terms of how we would alter it. This dress in some ways um, would be pretty affordable to alter. In other ways, it'd be a little bit, um, little bit extra. Uh, so the top is uh, fully lined and it is lined as a separate layer. I'll show you the inside in a minute. Uh, the skirt, uh, disappointingly, um, the seams are surged off inside. So we would have to um, unpick the surging in order to adjust the hip area. This is kind of like a, um, this is kind of cut on a circle. The skirt is. 
uh, which always gives a very flattering uh, drape and fall to the skirt for the wearer. So uh, the way this is cut is it, it's very flattering. That's a good cut that they did there. This is still, you know, obviously we got some problems up here that need to be fixed. But I don't think any of these issues that need to be repaired are actually going to push the alterations prices up any higher than what you would pay for a designer gown. This mesh piece was inset uh, very neatly. They did a good job on that. Uh, all the seams are pretty straightforward. That's good. Um, but, you know, this being surged off in the skirt area is unfortunate. They did this like formal wear up here kind of ish all right so we're gonna tunnel up through these layers just like we would a normal wedding gown and we'll see what happens all right so we have a lace layer here and we have a lining layer and there's no uh, second lining layer so typically what we would do is to tunnel up to alter we would pick up the lace layer we would pick up your shell layer that is seen underneath the lace and then you would typically have a third layer that's lining here and you would go up between this layer and that slip layer and go between the layers and that would get you to this seam that you could kind of pull this wrong side out and it would give you access to all this to alter Nothing like that happens here because of it only being two layers. So essentially to alter this, um, really the easiest way, and this is kind of unusual that it's the easiest way, the easiest way would probably be at the zipper. The way that they have the zipper sewn in, it is an invisible zipper, but they just kind of have the seam allowance just kind of folded back and tacked down. So you really could just release this and bring this in a little bit at the zipper and sew that back down. That would be the easiest. If you did need to alter at the side seams, you're gonna have to undo all of this right here with a razor blade and get in there. Probably open all of this up here, all the way down here and um, machine sew that lace and shell layer, which are kind of nested together here. And then um, I imagine you would probably have to just hand stitch this closed. And with this, you probably could go uh, between your two outer layers just to tuck that back in and machine sew that waist down. So that's how that would be altered. This dress would probably need some shells sewn in, but honestly, um, most wedding gowns need a little bit of extra work as far as the bust support and needing shells sewn in. So that's no big shock there. Uh, let me show you the difference between this and another gown that would be kind of striking the same silhouette but it's a little bit more common for what we see coming from bridal salons, you know, running somewhere. Um, I was looking for basically a lace dress that is a popular cut, um, commonly found, runs between, I don't know, 1000 thousand, twelve hundred, something like that, and 1800 So what I came up with is this Stella York and... I'm gonna show you kind of the details of how we alter this first. Here's the zipper. You can see already vast difference in the amount of support and structure in the bust area of this dress. All right, let's just kind of go flying over this here. Fast, fast difference. And here is that mesh inlaid. Very neatly. This is a much better lining fabric. This is just a really um, 
kind of a soft lightweight polyester woven and this is a knit it is still polyester but it's nice and soft there's a little bit of boning in here for structure as well and this of course doesn't have any boning which is not necessarily a bad thing um, some brides are shopping for dresses with no boning um, but typically uh, a dress is just gonna wear a little bit better and hang a little bit better with some boning now when you look at the opacity difference here you can really see the difference and how many layers there are let's look at the quality of the lace this is an embroidered lace and it has the clear sequins a lot of variation going on and you can tell um, this is not just a lace fabric that was sewn this is all hand sewn down after the fact because the lace crosses over seams the lace doesn't go down into the seams you can see this is prepped for altering and in order to alter it we had to pick all the lace away from every seam that we were going to work with. This is standard operating procedures. We'll peel that away. And again, I'll show you this on a dress form without it loose. And that gives us access to do the alterations on the actual seams. And then we have to hand sew all that back down. So again, here's the seams on the she-in dress. All right, there's that. Just gonna kind of fly over this for you to see the difference. This is actually lace fabric. So they cut out the pattern pieces in the lace and you can see the seams are all happening here visibly. The only place that there's kind of any type of like overlay work that's not going down into the seams is right here at the neckline. That's it. So we have some very obvious side seams here, which brides may or may not care about. Now looking at that hem edge that I was talking about, this is the hem edge on this Stella York gown. We have this really pretty border finishing things off. And again, here's the edge of the sheen dress. Now let's just look at the Stella York on the dress form. She strikes a very beautiful silhouette. Um, it's undeniable that this is definitely a very, very pretty dress. And you can see that there are a lot more detail, um, a lot more details going on with this dress than with the other one. Um, now, of course, we need to take into account the value. How much did it cost to manufacture this dress, both for, um, you know, the design, the labor, the materials, all of that adds up and so you can see in this situation you really do get what you pay for when you compare these two gowns just a world of difference you can see there's not visible side seams with this dress there is some button detailing here in the back there's beadwork on the edges of the back of the dress there's a lot of detail going on with this train. It is quite lovely. Also, uh, when you kind of stand back and look at the thoughtfulness of the design of this gown, uh, if you just follow the line here at the neckline, the side cutouts, and then the lace that's coming up to the front of the skirt, you can just see that repetition in there that just draws the eye in and just gives you some very feminine curves here. Everything is also just laying really nicely. Um, like we talked about, there's a lot more layers. There's some boning in here. A little bit more detail taking into uh, the shape 
when they were doing the pattern making for this dress. A lot more seams. When you have more seams, you have more detail in how you can contour and shape the gown to flatter the figure. So tell me in the comments down below, do you see the difference between these two gowns and is it worth it? When you look at this sheen gown was $29, the Stella York gown on average, the MSRP right now is going for about $1,400 for it. Have you worked on these two types of gowns? At least, you know, the value difference between these gowns. Just quantify that for me. Let me, let me hear your thoughts on the matter. Please also do not forget to hit subscribe hit like, ding the bell. You can find me on Instagram and also don't forget, you can purchase my book for sale. There's all sorts of interesting things on my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com. Go check that out. We'd love to have you over there and thank you for watching. I appreciate you.